Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Digico Productions. Um, it's a very, very, very beautiful day here in Bullock Harbour, Dunleary, Dublin, Ireland, European Union. Um, now, standing beside me, I have Sandra Pascaletti. Hello. Who is uh, one of our technology expert panel type people. Um, most eminent in her field. Um, and on this beautiful evening, the 19th of April 2018, remember it, because the last time we saw sun like this was back in September 2017. Um, so, Sandra, um, what are your thoughts on the Irish border and Brexit? Well, just one thought. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's interesting. I don't want a border. I don't want a border. You don't want a border at all. Oh. And why don't you want a border? Um, because I think, I mean, it, it, it's easier just, you know, to go uh, travel between the two, the, the two countries, you know, mm-hmm. as it is. And I don't know how the change would affect everything. And in this case, I mean, I, I don't mind change in my life, but I don't, I don't think I want this change. And then it's a change back, you know, it's like going backward. Um, and it, it also, you know, there were many people who voted in Brexit, but it, it only affects this part of Europe, you know. The rest of England and, you know, the Great Britain is not going to be affected because it's an island, so I don't think they thought about that. And, um, and the people in Northern Ireland, in fairness, they... They didn't want the Brexit, you know, so they don't want to join us <laughs> either, you know, and I don't know what else is left to try. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Uh, it feels like um, a naughty child has stood up and started screaming when you talk about Brexit and the Irish border. Um, I mean, I've been listening to these economists who've been putting forward this idea that uh, technology could monitor the border and still leave it with free flow to traffic. Um, Now, I've done a bit of digging on this, and it would cost approximately just over a billion euros to put a blockchain system that would monitor goods and individuals coming across the border without actually putting any shut-offs or slowdowns on the border. Now this would comprise of little chips that would be about the size of a two euro coin um, which would go on every individual piece of stock or goods or even people yeah, would have to carry them. Vehicles, I suppose. Cars, vehicles, yeah. And vehicles would have to carry them as well. You're quite right. Um, I worked out it would be 1.2 billion. Now, when you look at the cross trade on an annual basis between the North of Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, you're looking at about 30 billion in goods. Um, Some things, interestingly enough, like pigs, could possibly travel over the border three times. Pigs? Yeah, before they actually go to market. Pigs. (laughs) Pigs do a lot of travelling back and forth over the border before they finally reach the Irish markets. So, um, now you're looking at adding something like um, one euro to every 30 euros for the costs of the goods coming across the border. And this is an open border with a blockchain solution. Um, And this would be the cheap blockchain solution. Um, So now we're looking at currency fluctuations as well of could be up to 11% they're estimating um, when Brexit finally kicks in. Now, we're now looking at 14%, or one euro in seven being added to the costs of goods coming across the border. Um, There's something interesting about this statistic. Last year, during an 11% fluctuation in sterling versus the euro, 39 Irish mushroom producers shut down because this 11% swing was greater than the profits they were making on their fresh produce. Now imagine 15%. And you're looking at the difference in a laptop being imported here 
from 300 to 350 euros. Um, now that's the sort of point where on 10% margins, you actually wipe out the profits of the companies that are doing the exporting. Um, not the country that's going to import them anyway, I might add. So, I think it's looking rather ominous. There is no solution to the Irish border. Um, you cannot close the border. You cannot impose tariffs. And you cannot monitor the goods in any sensible fashion so that they maintain their value. Um, so, interesting, don't you think? Thing they can do. Go the, on. There might be one thing they can do. They can vote again. They could vote again. Like, uh, you know, when Ireland was asked to vote for the Lisbon Treaty and they didn't vote right the first time and they were asked to vote again, so why can't <laughs> the UK vote again? You know, like, because I, I, I watched a, pro, a TV program now with the BBC and uh, OITV, and there were, you know, there were people saying, we didn't know we were what we were voting for. We didn't want, we didn't vote to leave the, the market union, you know. I don't know how they thought in their mind they could leave the EU without leaving the market union. But that's what some people say, you know, and also the, what's the name, uh, the mayor that was there before, that he said, you know, should vote again. What was yes. his name? I can't oh, remember now. Percy Ahern. No, no, the English, the English prime minister. Oh. The um, British prime minister. What was his name? English prime minister. Not to worry. Oh, Not to worry. Remember now? Yeah. <laughs> These no, things no, happen. Before, before that. Uh, um, with grey hair and the glasses. Grey hair and... <laughs> Wow. You got it shows you how much attention we pay to politics. Um, now, politics. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, more importantly, that's a very good thing you've touched on, because we had this problem with the Maastricht Treaty. Oh, yeah. And the government, when they got a no vote, sent it back for another vote until they got the right vote, which was a yes vote. And the reason they sent it back was because shiploads of economists said, if you try to vote no on this, you're going to be bankrupt in a year. So they sent it back to vote again. And this time they got a yes vote once all of the facts had been explained, which I don't think have happened with Brexit. Mm. Um, I don't think the full implications of Brexit have been taken into account. Do you? No. 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 Thank you very much. Mayor. <laughs>